happy day. Glory to God. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Hallelujah. You should be. Nothing greater. You know what? The greatest weapon is worship. I mean, the greatest weapon is worship. I'm telling you, you want to kick the devil's butt? Worship. Just worship. The Word says that God ambushes your enemies when you worship. How could you not worship? Not only that, you get refreshed. You get filled and powered. <laughs> it's amazing how many people just don't want to worship. But anyways, <laughs> to all the worshipers, remember, it's an army of worshipers, man. Glory. You know what worship also does? It stirs you up. You know what? Because, see, you got to get down to get up. Amen. You got to humble yourself to get down to get up. Amen. I didn't mean sit down. I meant stand up to get up. Praise God. Hands raised, feet off the ground. Ready for takeoff. Yes. Glory. <laughs> Your Holy Ghost shuttle. <laughs> Would you turn to the book of Jude? Glory. Thank you, Master. Wonderful. Counselor, Almighty God, Prince of Peace, Host of Heaven, the Army. He is the Lord of hosts. Jude. In verse 14. Jude, verse 14. Uh, hallelujah. Get, get someone next to this guy. Get another chair. Praise God. Help out. Glory. Hallelujah. Jude. This is not hey Jude. Amen. This is the Jude. Hey Jude died. <laughs> the Jude lives. <laughs> Glory. And verse 14, is everybody there? Amen. Glory to God. Let's speak it. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, the seventh from Adam, the complete from Adam, something was going to happen. Let it rain. What did he do? He prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to do what? Execute judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who walk according to their own ungodly lust. Are we seeing that right now? Believe me, all these protesters, all these riots, they don't even know what they're protesting. They're just protesting. They're, they're still caught up in the old age see there is no more prejudice and bigotry in the new age here they're still caught up in the old that's been done with years ago they're the only ones that are trying to bring it back alive does everybody understand that that's old remember the devil only can bring things from what the past he can't bring nothing from the future because he has none amen 
He said, these are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Holy Spirit. They may be Christians. In fact, there are Christians supposedly out there writing and, and they're out there protesting. They think they're doing something for their cause. The problem is it's their cause, not God's. So they're fighting for something that God's not even ordained. What a terrible place to be. Verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up. That means stirring yourself up on your what? Most holy faith. In other words, stir yourself up to connect. Amen? See, you can't cross over until you stir yourself up to connect. You got to connect first, then you can cross over. Stirring yourself up, building yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, which is tongues. By praying in tongues. By praying in tongues. It's amazing how many people still don't believe that the gift is for them. Oh, it's just not for me. Of course, they have a spirit of unbelief. It's a demon. Most of them are under the doctrines of demons because they don't believe in gifts of the Spirit. Then they come with all kinds of religious rules. Well, you can't pray in tongues together in a group. Says who? We just magnified the Lord in the tongue, songs of tongues. See, they try to tell you about the gifts of the Spirit when they don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's amazing. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on the most holy faith to connect, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, keeping yourselves in the what? Love of God. So two things happen. He says you're going to connect, building yourself up in faith to connect. And what else? Keeping yourself in the love of God. Do you see the two things that tongues does? That's just two things. He's saying, look at. He just prophesied about all kinds of ungodliness coming. He prophesied about all these disasters and chaoses and things. He said, listen, you've got to get above it. You'll have to stir yourself up above it. What does an eagle do? He flies above it. Amen? Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until eternal life. And on some have compassion. On some making a distinction. Amen. <laughs> but others save with fear. Amen. There are some people you're going to have to just tell, look at bro, you keep this up, you're going to hell. Pulling them out of the fire of hell, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God of our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen and amen and amen. Stirring yourself up is building yourself up in most holy spirit faith to connect and prepare for crossover or bring you to the place of crossover into the arms of glory. Amen. And that's where power and strength, power and strength, is crossing over. Amen? See, tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the heavenly language. It is the major tool God gives to his people. It is a tool and it is a weapon. It is the foundation of many things. You and I are to stir ourselves up in the gifts for the connection to the gifts of the Spirit. All the gifts when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, every gift is available. But you must stir yourself up to connect. That's why tongues, you can't mess up. Amen? You can't mess up tongues. Now, the devil will tell you you can mess it up. Oh, man, that ain't tongues. Just keep praying. Just be, keep speaking in tongues. Keep speaking in tongues. He's going to always tell you that ain't tongues. Why? Because he don't know what you're praying and he can't interfere. It's the only thing that is not interpreted by the devil. Other than that, he knows what you think. He knows what your motives are. He knows everything about you. He's a spirit and these demons are spirit. And many times they walk right through your body and you don't even know it. 
They can't stay there unless they have a special invitation or a right to stay there. Amen? I'm telling you again, tongues is the major gift of the Holy Spirit for me and you. Major. It is a tool for a believer. What it just told us, it can bring us to the place to prepare for a crossover. Amen? I mean, my goodness. It keeps us in the love of God. There's so many other things by praying in the Spirit. But what it does also, it stirs up the other gifts of the Spirit by praying in tongues. And that's what you and I want to do. We need to have the tools. Listen, the gifts of the Spirit, they're His gifts. They're not yours. He's just looking for someone to use to yield to it so he can move. I never look at the outcome. That's not, my, that's not up to me. When I lay my hands on people, that's my, not my responsibility to heal them. That's his. Does everybody get it? See, we have to get our eyes off of ourselves. Our whole thing is to stir ourselves up to connect so we can cross over and use, be used by God with the gifts, all the gifts. I've seen people healed. I've seen demons fly. I've seen all kinds of things. And they're available for everyone that is filled and connected with the Spirit of God. But see, the religious spirits don't want people to know it. Or the familiar spirits want to imitate it. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36. I'll tell you what, you pray more in tongues, you won't have to go to Google. In fact, Google is nothing but the tongues of the devil. That's why it's called Google. They Google. Verse 36. Oh, glory. Acts 2.36. Everybody all right? Let's speak it together. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? They finally got convicted. Then Peter said to them, repent. Repent, activate the blood. And let every one of you be bought, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Now, check that out. It's a promise. You know, many times people don't accept the promise. How do you receive a promise? By faith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my healing. I don't feel it yet, but thank you. Thank you for removing that pain from me. I don't feel it yet, but thank you. Why? Because I know it isn't about a moment. It's not about a feeling. It's about a trust. Faith. 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 You're activating your faith. You're stirring yourself up to connect. See, what it does is get your eyes off of you and get your eyes on him. Amen? Oh, glory. The promise of the Holy Spirit and his gifts are for everyone. The, the one thing is, is many people don't go desire it. They don't believe it's for them. They believe it's for somebody else, and that's not true. And Joel chapter 2 <laughs> Stirring up the gifts. This is not stirring up talents. This is not stirring up abilities. This is stirring the gifts of the Spirit up. Now, if you're stirring the gifts of the Spirit up and you're stirring up faith, you know what? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. That's why you hear a lot of people that are 
spirit-filled man when they'll be picking up some heavy furniture or whatever. You They need a little boost. You know, sometimes you hear people in the gym, Atarakira! <laughs> Didn't work for that one. <laughs> oh, happy days. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 is... Verse 28. Everybody there? And it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. In other words, he's available for anyone. Your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Is that a gift of the spirit? Yeah. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming and the great awesome day of the Lord. So we know that there's an outpouring that's happening that's been going on since Pentecost. It's not stopped. The problem is many people just miss it. They're too caught up in flesh, religion, and the letter. Just because they know the word doesn't mean they know him. Because you can't know him without being in the spirit. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For Mount Zion and the Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant who the Lord Calls, dreams, visions, gifts of the Spirit. It's for everyone. Listen, everything that's happening right now, we need to start activating more in the gifts of the Spirit. Acts chapter 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9. <laughs> and verse 10. Praise God. Is everybody there? Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision. The Lord said to him in a vision. And he said, here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire of the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. You bet he's praying. <laughs> he's like, what the snap just happened? <laughs> and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him. So that he might receive his what? Sight because he became blind. Now, I want you to know that he had to get knocked off a horse. Amen? He didn't eat or drink for three days. God put him on the divine fast for three days. And he was blinded. And the only thing he could do is pray. God help me. I bet he said that a lot of times. Oh, God help me. Oh, Jesus, you're the one. Man, I can't believe all the stuff I did. Oh, man, there's a lot of blood on my hands. Help. Verse 13. Then and I said, answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man and how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, murdering, jailing, destroying families. And here, here, he, here he is, and he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Tell me God can't turn her heart around. One slam dunk, you're done. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may what? Receive your sight. 
Why? Because that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. It brings you new sight. After I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, man, I spoke to every, I preached to the ants. It didn't matter. If it moved, I, they heard the word. I was testimony everywhere. Just trees, everything. Of course, some of those, I said, man, <laughs> you're temporary. I had two things. Jesus is coming and you're temporary. But he first said to receive your sight and then to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But again, he had a visitation from the Lord, but the Lord put him on a fast. Well, to separate him. He said, no more can you go nowhere. You're blinded. You can't see. You can't be led. Nothing. Nothing. He needed to clean him up, didn't he? In verse 18, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. That's called the veil of Satan. And he received his sight at once, and he rose and was baptized. And when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Now look at this. What's the next verse? Immediately he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. He went out and get testimony immediately, right after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? He was a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. There was a brand new, a whole new realm opens up in this realm. Listen, when you really are filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, everything is opened. There's a new sight there's a new sense there's everything is brand new and that still can you and then the, it's important that you and i stay refreshed with that that's why stirring yourself up praying in the spirit stirring those gifts up is vitally important or you become carnal you become dry you can't even finish worship you get endure you have endurance you have strength Saul was baptized in the Holy Spirit and the gifts or the tools of the Holy Spirit immediately gave testimony and new eyes of understanding came to him. Acts 19. You know, that's one of the things I really believe that we need to be reminded of because we begin to drift from it. You know, we splurt out a few here and there and pray in the morning, you know. Start your day. I mean, I'll tell you what. If you start your day off praying in the Spirit. And you, now, I, I, myself, I do both. I pray in the Spirit and then I pray in English because i got to satisfy this goofy mind. i got to take dominion over the mind by decreeing words from God. Why? Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. But majority of prayer is praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. And when I want to hear what God wants to give me after I do my warfare, I'll pray in the Spirit. Then he releases something. He'll tell me a psalm. He'll tell me a scripture, whatever it is. He'll tell me to pick up a book. There's a book over there. There's on something on this chapter. Go get it. I want to speak to you on some. Or he'll just speak to me. But majority of the time, God speaks to me through sight. That's what's important. Sight. There's no more assuming in the Spirit. There's absolutes. Hallelujah. Acts 19, verse 1. Now it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And what did they say? What did they say? So they said to him, we have, no, have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Well, you know what? People are hearing about the Holy Spirit and still not receiving them. Because they haven't humbled themselves to. See, pride, unbelief, and carnal thinking. Sin also. <laughs> that will prevent the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're still playing things, doing things you shouldn't what your intentions are. God knows your motives and intentions. Amen? He knows whether you're serious or not. The word says desire. Desire. If there's no desire to it, you don't get it. Hallelujah. And verse 3, and he said to them, then what were you baptized? And they said, John the Baptist, in other words. And he said, 
Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they received, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they did what? Did they dance? No. Did they cry? No. They spoke with tongues. Hello. Why? They had a breakthrough. And what else? They prophesied. So two gifts manifested. But the first one was what? Tongues. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the first gift that will always manifest is tongues. Because the first thing God wants you to be able to do is speak to him directly. Without this. Without the mind. Oh, Lord, this is what I need. Oh, pray in the Spirit. Oh, Lord, what about me? Oh, pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Many not received the Holy Spirit when accepted Jesus as Lord. They received the seed of God, but not the Holy Spirit. Does everybody understand? You have to repent. You got to come humble. You know, everything's done according to the measure of your faith. Where's your faith at? You know, the, the Bible says the, the word comes by what? Faith comes by what? Hearing the word. Amen? So until you are, you have to decree the word, hearing the word, well, you're hearing the word right now. It should be increasing your faith. And one of the things you should be increasing is about more about the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, I need to pray in tongues more. I need to have the gift of the Spirit. I need it. Why? Because you need it. You need it to overcome all of the poop that's going out out there, man. I mean, it's crazy. No matter where do you turn, everything's slapping evil. It's like they're in Nineveh. Everybody's slapping each other with fish. For those who haven't seen Veggie Tales, you need to. <laughs> Bunch of fish slappers. 1 Corinthians 12. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Is everybody there? Now concerning spiritual gifts, spiritual tools, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were, when you were, that you were Gentiles carried away with these dumb idols, however you were led, Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the what? Same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but it's the same Lord. Now, the Word says where the Lord is, He's the Spirit. Amen? But it's actually separating the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen? And... So the first one is the Holy Spirit. The second, diversities of ministries, but it's the same Lord, that's Jesus. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God, the Father, who works in all in all. There's the Trinity. There's the gifts. Amen. There, there's the administrations. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of what? All. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Now, I want you to understand the word here is, doesn't mean that one just has the word of wisdom. He's just bringing it, identifying it. Amen? He's labeling it. He's saying, and, and one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as who? As he wills. Does everybody get it? But I want you to look at something very powerful because the foundation of all of these gifts is tongues. Tongues, interpretations of tongues. Actually, prophecy is interpretation of tongues. So I don't go 
figuring out whether God gave me the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge or understanding or the gift of miracles or whatever. I just do whatever. Whatever he leads me to do, I'm not going to go around and say, was that the word of wisdom? Who cares? Just release it. Yield and let it go. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay. Tools are gifts of the Spirit. Stirring up gift in is tongues. Amen? It's not emotional seeing. It's knowing by connection and crossing over. And you don't stir yourself to uh, work the gift of miracles. That's not what he's talking about. You are stirring yourself up is to connect and cross over and yield yourself to what the Spirit wants. Matthew 7. See, when people emotionally build themselves up to try and move in a gift, they fail. Then they get very discouraged, and the enemy tears them up. Matthew 7, verse 21. Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. The Word of God is worth the drive. Amen. It's training session. We're in a military operation. God is loading you up tonight. Amen. Filling up that Holy Ghost bazooka. Loading up, man. Go out there. Come out in Jesus' name. Get behind me. Follow on clean spirit. Holy Ghost stick up. Amen? Empty your pockets, you tithe stealer, you. <laughs> Lift your hands and empty your pockets, right? <laughs> How dare you steal from my father? Glory, Matthew 7. Verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. There, it's simple enough. Does anyone in here not understand this? Anyone out there not understand this? Anyone listening not understand this? Listen, if you ain't doing the will of God, you ain't getting home. Simple. You need to use the gifts. Amen? It's that simple. But I've been doing the will of God. Really? And that crack house is the will of God? Sleeping with that person is the will of God? Unmarried? Oh, you're living by emotion. Is that the will of God? No. no. Touching unclean things is the will of God? No. How about selfishness? No. How about survival mode instead of surrender? Trinity of me, myself, and I. Death. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter. And many will say to me in that day, but Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Oh, they connected, but they never crossed over. Why? Because he said, then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me because you practiced lawlessness. Oh, you connected for the gifts to build yourself up. But you still practice lawlessness behind closed doors. You prophesied for money. You used my gifts for money. Believe me, I've seen this. I've had to leave ministries because I saw this. Therefore, whoever hears sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall because it was built, it was founded on the what? Rock, what's the rock mean? Anointing. Amen? It's the anointing. What is the anointing? Who is the carrier of the anointing? Holy Spirit. 
So if it's built on the anointing, it's also built with the gifts of the Spirit. The tools will maintain it. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand, religion. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Again, they were connected but never crossed over. They were knocking but never came into dying. Jesus won't open the door to a sinner until he repents. Amen. Again, God does not forgive sin. He does not forgive sin. He does not forgive transgressions. And he does not forgive iniquities. He forgives the people. Does everybody get this? It says he hates sin. God hates something, man. <laughs> it, don't mean, it means he don't forgive it. It means he judges it. 1 Corinthians 14. Stirring up the gifts. Are you stirred up tonight? Amen. Praise God. First Corinthians 14, verse 1. Glory. It's time. It's time to live in the crossover. Let's speak it. Pursue love and do what? And desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may what? Prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? To who? God. For no one understands him, thank God. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself or builds himself up, stirs himself up. But he who prophesies builds up the church or stirs up the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues. That's what he said. I wish you all spoke with tongues. Not everyone received it. Why? Because they didn't receive it. But was it available to them? Yes. He just, we just read about the promise to them and everyone else. But even more that you prophesy, for he who prof prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets. Why? Because if he interprets, he's prophesying. That the church may receive edification. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge, by prophesying or by teaching? In other words, I'm not going to come on the pulpit for an hour and go, You ain't going to get it. So we're not to speak to one another in tongues. Does everybody understand it? That's not what it's about. It's a language that's for you and God. I'm bilingual, but, you know, not. But not to men. <laughs> One language to men, the other to daddy. Again, <laughs> I wish you all spoke with tongues, right? That's what he said. All right. Verse 7. Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped? Or played. For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for the battle? So likewise, unless you utter by the tongues, by the tongue words, easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are, it may, <laughs> so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Our language is not of the world. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, it shall be a foreign to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Even so you, since you are zealous for the spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you excel, seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may what? 
interpret. Now that is wonderful, especially when you are at home and you're praying in your closet and you're praying in tongues. Does everybody understand? God will give you an interpretation needed for you if it's needed. When I get stuck on something, I start praying in the Spirit. What do I need? I need revelation right away. Now when I'm praying in the Spirit, God begins to store revelation for me where the devil can't get it because it's not going into my mind. It's going into my spirit. So when the Holy Spirit sees that I need what I've just been praying, which I don't know, the devil don't know, but the Holy Spirit knows, then he'll bring it to remembrance, and I don't even realize that I prayed it in already. Does everybody get it? Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. What prays? My spirit, not my mind, not my desires, not my emotions. My spirit pray, but my understanding is unfruitful. Thank God I don't need to understand it, and neither does the devil. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, amen, and I'll pray with the what? Understanding. In other words, I will pray in tongues, and I will pray with my common language to understand. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will, <laughs> how will you occupy the place of the uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say for you indeed give thanks well but the others is not edified i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all look at how listen didn't paul write the basically most of the new testament think about this why that was mysteries that god gave him by what? Praying in tongues from the moment that he got hands laid on him, got baptized in the Holy Spirit. That dude prayed in tongues. And God gave him the interpretations to where he was able to write everything. You and I wouldn't even know what was happening. If this, uh, to Corinthians and all of these letters are interpretation of tongues. Does everybody get it? God gave him the mysteries. And what did he keep saying? He said, the Lord gave me mysteries. Why? He prayed in tongues. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. So did I thank him. We wouldn't get this. Yet in a church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in tongues. Brethren, don't be idiot. I mean, don't be children in understanding. However, in males be babes, but in understanding be what? Mature. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips. I will speak to them. They're this people, and yet they will, <laughs> for all that they will not hear, says the Lord. Therefore, tongues are for what? A sign. Not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Now, I'm going to tell you what, when we pray in tongues, many times it encourages people to pray in tongues. That's why we give opportunity to pray in tongues. We magnify God in the spirit in tongues after we worship. It's like putting icing on the cake. Hallelujah. Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. Many times I, you know, people come and talk with me and I ask them, do you pray in the spirit? Yeah, I pray in the spirit all the time, yeah. But they don't, they think praying in the Spirit is just praying God's Word. And I'm not saying that the Word of God being prayed isn't, doesn't go into the Spirit. But praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. Hallelujah. God hears prayer. But there's some prayers he don't want the devil to hear. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Is everybody there? Whom will he teach knowledge? Are you ready? And whom will he make to understand the what? Message. The message of what? The spirit. What is the message? It's tongues. Watch. Those just weaned from milk. Those just drawn from the breasts. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. There a little. For with what? Stammering lips. And another language. 
He will speak to this people. Who will speak to this people? God will. See, these should be all capital letters for he. To whom he said, this is the rest with which. So when you're praying in tongues, you know what you're doing? You are resting. You're resting from what? Trying to figure out what you need to pray. You may cause the weary to rest. And this is the re what? Refreshing. See, this is the stirring up. When you stir up, you get refreshed. Yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was to them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and caught. Whoa. Again. Tongues, he says, it's stammering lips. There is a message. There's a mystery. You pray it. He's re you're speaking to him. He, you're praying the perfect will of God in tongues. God is releasing a, a mystery in you, a message. 1 Corinthians 13. Stirring up the gifts. Man, we need to have those tools, those gifts. You know, one day, I, after I got saved and so forth, and I was, I got the limousine out of Hawk. I had a 40, <laughs> they, it was pounded because I got busted and so forth. So they took it. And, uh, of course, they cleaned it out for me. The police did. <laughs> and uh, so I, I was... It was a 46 Chrysler stretch limo, and I'm driving, and the car dies on me. What the snap? I pull over. I don't know what to do. I pray in the spirit. The Lord says, is there anything different between a motor and a body? I said, I guess not. He said, lay your hands on that engine and command whatever is not, is broken to be fixed. I, my stripes heal everything. I lay my hands on the engine. He said, go in and start it. <laughs> Started right up. I was gone. Next time it broke, I said, Lord, what's what? Should I lay my hands on it? And he said, no, pray in the spirit. I'm going to show you what's wrong. And he showed me something with the carburetor. It was either disconnected or a vacuum or whatever. I had a picture of it. And I just went, Poof. that was it. I've done all kinds of things. I was getting ready to do something else. He said, don't do that. Pray in the spirit. And I did. And he said, see, you didn't need to fix that. It was something else. See, the Spirit guides you to all truth. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, but have not what? Love. See, you are stirring yourself up. What are we talking about? Praying in tongues. You're stirring yourself up in faith and love. See, back of this, behind everything, there should be God's love. I mean, God rebuked those ones that were using the gifts because, you know what, there wasn't God's love in it. They were practicing lawlessness. If you love God, you don't practice lawlessness. Though I speak with tongues and men of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, in other words, all of the gifts are manifested so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, well, that ain't no good, but have not love, it profits me what? Nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never what? Fails. Love never fails. Ooh. Go to Acts 3. Acts chapter 3. 
And, you know, one of the things about praying in tongues is you will begin to mature more. You'll grow quicker. And you don't need to know, go to no Bible college, cemetery schools. I need to go get a degree. Listen, when God seals you, you're sealed. And, and don't, don't get me wrong. I, I, uh, my degrees were, one thing I said, Lord, please don't, I, I'm not going to no school. Please don't send me to no school. He said, you're going to need credentials because people won't believe you because you're crazy. And uh, so, anyways, God made way through someone by praying in the Spirit that was uh, on a board of a college, ran across them, the Lord and they called me and said, listen, the Lord told me to help you get your credentials. I said, whoa. So they gave me a, a written pre-test. And I took this written pre-test to see if I even qualified to take the final exam, a four-year college theological exam. And so they said, well, you qualified. And so they gave me this 300-question four-year degree exam for a bachelor's degree. And I got, I think, a 92 on it. Listen, you pray in the Spirit, you get the answers too. Now, I can't say that for everything, amen? <laughs> you got to still study something. Hallelujah. And then a year later, they sent me a doctorate degree. But that isn't what it is. You can have all the degrees you want with no relationship and be practicing lawlessness. Amen? Glory to God. Acts 3 something, 18. Is everybody there? But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the Father, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things and whatever he says to you. It shall be that every soul will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from what? Among the people. Yes, all the prophets from Samuel and to those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these things. You are sons of the prophets. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your seed all families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Wow. Refreshing from his presence comes repentance. Amen. Refreshing. Repentance. Revelation 22. Glory. Revelation 22 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? And he says, He showed me a pure river of water of life. See, when you pray in the Spirit, it's like pumping. You're pumping into the well of living water. The water of life. When you pray in the Spirit, you're pumping it. And, 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 and you're sending that bucket down. <laughs> you're turning a wheel. And where that bucket goes down to the well, picks up that river of life with all mysteries in it, and dumps it in your spirit. Now, you don't know what it is. And either does the devil. But the Lord will say, pray in the Spirit. And next thing you know, you're getting a drink. And then, whoo, snap. Ah, I see it now, Lord. I see it now. I understand it. 
See, there are many answers to all of these questions in the river of living water. Hallelujah. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its streets and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And these shall be no more curse, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said to me, These words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of, ho uh, of the holy prophets sent his angels to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed be he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard I saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and your brethren, the prophets. And those who keep the words of this book worship God. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter it through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs. Now, he doesn't mean animals. These are demonized individuals, which are animals. Yeah. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and idolatries and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things. In the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say what? Come. That means we're home already. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. See, when you're praying in the Spirit, you're accessing the water of life. Amen? And, so, and John, John 7. John 7. John seven thirty seven. John seven thirty seven. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, saying, I think he got everybody's attention. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Not go to the bar. Amen. Not go fulfill your lust. Come to him and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of what? Living water, which is the river of life. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Wow. Not yet glorified. Freely give. Amen. Go to John 5 while we're here. In verse 1. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethsida, Bethsida, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the what? 
moving of the water of life. It became life when the angel came and stirred it. They were waiting. For an angel would come, would went down at a certain time. Nobody knew the time. They had to wait. Into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. But while I'm coming, another steps in before me. And Jesus said to him, rise, take your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, is it the Sabbath is not lawful for you to carry your bed? I guess you couldn't carry your, your bed on the Sabbath. So you couldn't change your sheets either. Verse 11. And he answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? But the one who had healed, was healed, did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn him in a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. That's what happens to people. They get filled with the Holy Spirit, they sin, and the worst thing comes. See, all this is about stirring and moving to the water. It became water of life. See, that's what you're doing. You're stirring and moving. You're stirring and moving the river of life within you. And out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. See, this is where identity needs to be so important. That you are a walking water fountain. Amen? You can, Jesus said, give a cup in my name. And I'm going to close it Psalm 1. Oh, happy days. Listen, this is between you and God. Amen? This is your relationship with him. We need to use the tools. But you got to get filled. You can't give what you don't have. Amen? You got to connect and cross over. Connect and cross over. You can't just keep connecting. There's got to be times of crossing over. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the world or the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the truth, the law of the Lord. And in the truth or law, he meditates day and night. In other words, it's always before him. He shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Listen, when Jesus healed this one man and he put his hands on, him, on his eyes and the guy began to see that the first thing he said, I see people like trees. I saw people like trees. Then the Lord touched the, uh, or, then he got touched again in his eyes and they began to completely see. But the first thing you saw was people as trees. Trees. It's symbolic. Trees of righteousness. We're to be trees of righteousness. Amen? We're to be trees by the planted by the river, by the anointing. We're to be thirsty and hunger to receive the river of life and to bear fruits for his glory. 
Verse 4, and the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives around. These are dry people. See, they can come to worship, but they're still dry. Why? Because they never cross over. They don't endure enough. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So whose responsibility is to stir you up? Ours. Ours. It's our responsibility. Stir yourself up. Why? You got to get down to get up. You got to connect to cross over. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. And in such a time and season and need right now, Lord, we ask for your mercies and grace. And those, Lord, that are seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit, truly desiring to be baptized with your spirit and fire. I'm asking, Lord, that you'll release it to them and that you'll visit them even while they sleep. Slam them. Slam them. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. And those who come to you, Lord, you will never desire, deny them or reject them to receiving the Holy Spirit because it's your breath in mankind. And we give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.